of us are witnesses. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsibly Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is in the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I will not pour out drink offerings to such gods, never take their names upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because God is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, and let your bodily ones see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The second reading is from the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. For our gospel acclamation this morning, we're going to do something a little bit different. You're all up for something different. Okay, good. I knew you were. Uh, so there's one, you know this song, it's kind of an old camp song, it goes like this. Alleluia, 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 praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, 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 praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, alleluia, praise ye the Lord, alleluia, praise ye the Lord, alleluia, praise ye the Lord. Okay, you got it, pretty simple, right? Okay, this side's going to do the alleluias, this side's going to do the praise ye the Lord. Are you ready? Are you up to it? You, you, will you accept the challenge? Okay, it's Easter. Come on now. We've got to have a little joy and give thanks and really sing it like we mean it. Are you ready? Are you with me? Yeah, why don't we stand up? That's a good idea, Steve. Thank you. I forget. I need all the help I can get, by the way. So, okay, here we go. Alleluia, 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 praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, 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 praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. You did an awesome job. All right. Now we're ready to hear the really good news from the gospel according to St. John, uh, reading from the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening, on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, 
He showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You have believed because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Welcome you to be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, and from our living Lord, our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, our text, as you uh, have noticed, is in two parts. The first part of the story takes place on Easter Sunday. It's that afternoon. And then the second half of the story takes place a week later. And as we come together this morning, one week after the greatest celebration of the Christian uh, church year, the highest festival, the celebration of the resurrection of our Lord, as we come together now one week later, I would like us to focus on this text in terms of trying to discover post-resurrection resources. You got it? post Resurrection resources. And the question we want to ask is, what is needed? What is needed? Let us pray. Come into our hearts, come into our hearts. Come into our hearts, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into our hearts, Lord Jesus. Be present with us. Fill us with your peace. Grant us your power through the Holy Spirit. Bless us now in this time together we offer this. In the name of the risen Christ. Amen. Okay, just put yourself for a moment in the place of those disciples. Okay, Judas is is not there obviously because Judas has already gone out and hanged himself. Very sad and tragic, but that's what the scriptures tell us. So now, 
And Thomas is not there. We just read that. So we're down to ten, right? So these ten disciples are gathered together. Now it's the evening of Easter Sunday. It's the evening of that day of resurrection. Mary has already been to to them and and has already given them her witness. She's already told them what she has, has seen. She has come and she has said, I have seen the Lord. But you know, they're having a little problem. And and where do we find them? The scripture that we just read tells us that the disciples are hidden away, locked behind doors, because they were what? Afraid. They are experiencing fear. They are afraid. We come together this morning one week after Easter. And I asked the church council this past uh, week because I always like a little help with my sermons, you know. And, uh, and so I asked the church council, what do you think we need one week after Easter? What do we need? What do we need to hear? What do we need to receive? What do we need to be assured of? What, what do we need? I think all of us can at least, in a way, relate to those disciples. There's enough things in this world to cause fear. I don't need to put the list out there for us, do I? I, I, I am getting so, so upset by all of the mass shootings. Aren't you? How could we not be? The war in Ukraine. Okay, I told you I wasn't going to list, so I'll stop right there. But there is fear. And and yet when I asked the church council order, someone said, well, uh, what we need is to have as many people in church as we had on Easter Sunday. (laughs) This is called Low Sunday. Have you ever heard that before? You know, the the, uh, assistant pastor always gets to preach on Low Sunday. I understand that. I used to do that myself when I had an assistant, you know. So, okay, but here we are, one week later, what do we need? Now, when we have fear, fear is not something that you can yourself do away with. When you have fear, it's real, is it not? And just saying to you, don't be afraid, doesn't always hack it, does it? It's like the song, don't worry, be happy. Oh, yeah, okay, Mm mm-hmm. Now tell me why. Well, well, here's the thing. The disciples are afraid. Jesus knows what they need. You believe that, don't you? Jesus knows what those disciples need. Jesus knows what you and I need. Are you with me so far? So what does Jesus do? Jesus knows what they need. So what does Jesus do? What is the Bible? We just read it. What is the first thing Jesus does? It said, the Bible says Jesus came to them. Just think about that for a moment with me. Jesus came to them. Jesus didn't hide away. Jesus didn't, you know, go poofing up to heaven immediately. Jesus didn't run away from the problem or or whatever. Jesus came to them. I'm going to call it the presence of the Lord. Jesus made himself present with them. Jesus comes to us, does he not? We celebrate that every Sunday. We call it the Lord's Supper. We believe and profess that the real, the body and blood of of Jesus Christ are present, really present, in, with, and under the forms of bread and wine. Jesus comes to us. Jesus came to Mary in the garden, the day of the resurrection. Jesus came to those disciples. Jesus is always coming to us in the midst of our fear, in the midst 
of our need. Jesus came. Now here's an amazing thing. Look at what it says next. It says, Jesus came and he said to them what? Peace. Now, no, wait a minute. Time for Greek. Because you see, in Greek, it's only two words. Erene hymen. I bet you can have fun saying that, can't you? Erene hymen. It's only two words. There's no B in there. It's peace to you. You see, Jesus is giving the gift of peace. Peace to you. Erene hymen. Now that peace, that peace that passes all understanding, that, that is the peace that takes away our fear, that brings calm and brings order. You know, when you are really afraid and you're, you're shaking fear, there's a sense of, of disorder, a sense of loss of control. You don't know where things are going, what's going to happen next. And the church council, you know, when we talk about what do we need, one of the things we need is direction for the future, right? Some of you were there. We need direction for the future. We need to know where things are going to go. We need to be assured. So Jesus comes and he says, Peace to you, Irene Hyman. And then, look at this. We can gloss over this, but please don't. The next thing that it says is, Jesus breathed on them. How do you feel about that, folks? You know, we've just been through this whole COVID thing, and, and I, we're, I think we're a little anxious about breathing on each other. Are you with me? You know, don't get uh, six feet is about all the closer we need. But we, we're starting to risk a little even handshake. You know, some of us are really taking a big risk here. And once in a great while, somebody even will give a hug. Oh, boy. You know, but hold your breath because don't be, you know. But Jesus, breathe. What does that mean? Well, go back with me to Genesis. And go back with me to the story of creation. And when God made human beings, the Bible says, you know, he took the or, or dust or the uh, or clay and, and whatever, and, he, and then the Bible says, God, what? Breathed into this, the breath of life. When Jesus, when Jesus died on the cross, Jesus uh, commended his spirit uh, to the Father, and then the Bible says he breathed his last. There's another story in the Old Testament. You remember that story in Ezekiel about the dry bones? You remember it. Some of you do at least. And all these dry bones, it was like the nation, and they, they were all dead. And, and the Bible says that the, the breath, breath breathed into them. And then what happened? And they well, they came alive. So when Jesus breathed, when he breathed on them, do you suppose maybe that could, that could indicate that life, new life, was being given to them, was being, was being infused into them in a way. Jesus breathed onto them, and then what did he do? And then he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Wow. This, by the way, this is not Pentecost. Pentecost doesn't come for 50 days after Easter. Well, now we're down to, what, 43 or something, whatever the count is, right? And then we'll celebrate Pentecost a, a, a little bit later on when, you know, the tongues of fire dancing on it. You remember the story and, the, and so forth. But on this occasion, this is Easter Sunday, and Jesus breathed on them and he said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Why? What's the purpose? Well, Jesus goes on and he says, forgive. He, by giving them the Holy Spirit, is giving them the power to forgive sins. Do you realize how important that is? I need forgiveness. And by the way, so do you. We all do. We need forgiveness. And we need to give forgiveness to each other. Don't hold a grudge. It's just not good. 
It wears you out. It's not helpful. Forgive. The Greek word of fear me means to let go, to release. Let it go. Let it fly away. Let it go. And that's forgiveness. And Jesus gives us, gives the disciples, gives us the Holy Spirit so that one of the great blessings, we can forgive and be forgiven. We pray in the Lord's Prayer, don't we? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So you see, it's a two-way street. Here on Easter evening, Jesus gives the gift of the Holy Spirit and the power to forgive. Okay, how are we doing so far? All right, so we got pr- the presence of the Lord. We've got the peace that passes all understanding, and we've got the power to forgive. We're in a row here, folks. Are you with me? Okay, but we're not done yet. Thomas is not there. Oh, man. Don't, you, know, you know what FOMO is? F-O-M-O? Fear of missing out. I wonder if Thomas forever that he experienced FOMO. I don't know if there were other occasions when he didn't show up, but, but he missed out. He wasn't there. Jesus came, and Thomas wasn't there. Yeah, how many people are missing out this morning, you know, that, 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 and they aren't here? I'm glad you folks are, so you don't miss out on the grace, the good news, the gift that we are given on this uh, Sunday after Easter. But Thomas wasn't there. He missed out. And so, uh, I don't know, a week goes by. What's happening during that whole week? The Bible says the disciples kept telling Thomas, and you, you miss this in the English, but the idea here is that the disciples kept telling Thomas over and over and over again. They kept on telling him, we have seen the Lord, we have seen the Lord. Thomas said, I don't believe it. We have seen the Lord, I don't believe it. We have seen the Lord, I don't believe it. And, oh man, do you think that would wear you out after a while? You keep telling someone something and they keep saying to you, I don't believe you, I don't believe you. How are the disciples going to maintain relationship with Thomas during this time? Well, I know how, because they've received the Holy Spirit and have been given the ability to forgive. Isn't that cool? A week goes by. Now, this time Thomas is there. And what happens? Jesus comes again. And he says the same thing. Ewene Hymen. You remember that? Peace to you. Peace to you. And then he says to Thomas, all right, Thomas, go ahead. Take a look. Put your finger, you know, check it out. I'm real. I'm alive. And I'm here. Now, here's the amazing thing. We don't know if Thomas actually did, did touch him or anything. It doesn't say. But what it does tell us is that Thomas, you know, when we hear Thomas, what do we think of? Will you quit that? <laughs> that is such a bum rap. First of all, the Greek word is not a word for doubt. Greeks have words for doubt, but that's not a word here. The word here is apistos, which means without faith. And what is pistos, the Greek word for faith? It also means believe, and it also means trust. So faith, believe, trust. And Jesus says to Thomas, don't be without faith, don't be disbelieving, don't be distrusting, don't be without faith, trust and belief, but believe. And Thomas now gives this response. You know what he says? My Lord and my God. Folks, this is the only place in the New Testament where Jesus is actually called God. That's true. And who says it? Thomas. Thomas really becomes confessing Thomas. You think we can work out, work together to give him a new ID? I think he needs a new ID. I think he's confessing Thomas. Because he's the one who says, my Lord and my God. Okay, folks, so what do we need? 
So what do we need? Here we are, Sunday after Easter. There's enough fear to go around. What do we need? Let's review. Number one, we need the what? The presence of of the Lord who promises to come and meet us wherever we are. So we need the, we have and are given the presence of the Lord. Number two, the what? Peace that passes all understanding. So we have God's promise and gift of peace. Number three, the, oh good, power of what? Holy Spirit to what? Forgive. Okay, so we got the power of the Holy Spirit to forgive. Let us be people who are forgiving. And then the fourth thing, now you've got to have a little Greek. You're going to be Greek people before you know it. So we have also the gift of pistis. I like that because, you know, we're on a roll with peas here, right? Okay? So we are given pistis, which means, the, which means faith, belief, and trust. Let us go forth from this place with those resources so that we can be Easter people to the world. You think the world needs it? I do. And may God bless us in our Easter journey. And let us say, Amen. Now may the peace that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in the risen Christ Jesus. Amen. Now what do we do? Please stand as you're able. We have a hymn. Thine is the glory. Number 376. In conquering sun, and this is the victory thou on earth hast won. Angels in bright raiment hold the storm away. Turn the current ripples where the body lay. Mine is the glory, this in conquering sun. And this is the victory Thou or death hast won Lord Jesus meets Thee Risen from the tomb Lovingly He greets Thee Scatters fear and gloom Let His church with gladness Hymns of triumph sing For the Lord now lives that hath lost its sting. Thine is the glory, risen in conquering sun. Endless is the victory, thou or death hast won. No more we doubt thee, glorious prince of life. There is not without thee, Made us in our strife, make us more than conquerors who thy deathless love. Bring us safe through Jordan to thy home above. Mine is the glory, risen conquering sun, and thus is the victory. In this Easter season, we continue our celebration as we profess our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. You find it on page 104 in the front part of the ELW. Page numbers are on the bottom of the page, page 104. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, 
of one being with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of rebirth, the good news of your resurrection brings refreshment to a weary world. Following the women at the tomb, empower us to boldly share your radical love through our words and our work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. As you breathe your spirit into the disciples, breathe your spirit of healing upon all creation. Nourish the earth with growth and stability. Strengthen us to counter the effects of pollution and destruction. Give those in authority clear minds and hearts that crave to do your will. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You prepare the disciples for their ministry by calming their fears and granting them your peace. Equip our church community's leaders. Give them a spirit of peace and hearts that burn for justice, that their leadership reflects your love and kindness. We pray especially for our bishops, Elizabeth Eaton and Bill Goal. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You come among us in unexpected ways. Send us to those who hide in fear or question your love. Be a healing presence for any isolated by addiction, incarceration, mental illness, chronic pain, sickness, or grief, especially those on our prayer list and those that we name out loud or in the quiet of our hearts now. Toby, Dan, Phil, Mary, Mary, Betty, Dan. Barbara. Be especially with those whose needs are known only to you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We ask for your comfort and strength for the Congregation of Faith Lutheran Church in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Help them to manage the rebuilding of their historic church that was destroyed by fire on Easter Sunday. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. As you met the disciples on the road to Emmaus, show us your presence along our journeys. Bless our doubts and our questions. Provide trusting and safe relationships for all ages to nurture our connection to you and to one another. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Resurrecting God, you bring us to new life every day. Thank you for blessing us with companions on our faith journey, especially those who now rest in your love. Strengthen us with the eternal peace of your promises. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and our praise to you, Triune God. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of God's love and peace.
Touch <laughs> peace. important part of Christian worship is the giving of our offerings. And so now it is our privilege to continue to worship the risen Lord with the gifts of our tithes and offerings. Please stand as you are able as we sing together our offertory hymn. For your very self, we give, give thanks, thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, 
for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink of it for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with boldness as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, gives everyone a place at the welcome table. The body of Christ is broken for us and shared for all. The blood of Christ is shed for us and shared for all. Now all is ready. Alleluia. Come to the feast. You may be seated to come at the direction of the usher. Further instruction for the Lord's Supper is printed in your bulletin. I welcome you to take a glance at that. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Christ, 
shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. given for you. The body of Christ 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 given for you. How will the Lord Jesus bless you and keep you in the arms of his love always? The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ given for you.
body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. That's okay. You've had the whole... Yeah. Oh, there you go. Please stand as you're able. Now the body of our Lord Jesus the Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto life abundant and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, you have and greeted us, us in, in our brokenness and nourished us with the body of Christ broken for us risen to new life with you, send us now to bear your healing love into the wounded world. In the name of our risen Savior and Lord. Amen. Now may God, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Uh, there's a whole bunch of announcements in the bulletin. You can read, so I trust you'll read them for yourself. Uh, but just one more, one thing, and that is that this Wednesday, we begin our lunches uh, here at church. Hallelujah. Uh, oh, and, uh, and immediately after we have lunch uh, together, uh, you're invited to a senior adult ministry planning session around about quarter to one or so, and that'll be in, in room five. So if you'd like to have some input on what uh, uh, Sam is doing at, uh, at St. Peter's, uh, come and join. Oh, we've got something waving in, the, waving in the back. Okay, go ahead, Suzanne. Thanks, Suzanne. Okay, join me as we sing together our sending hymn, We Walk by Faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Praise me, O Christ who spoke as one who spoke, my peace be with you here. You may not touch your hands on side, or follow where you trod. But in your promise we rejoice and cry, my Lord and God. Upload our unbelief, and may our faith abide. To call on you when you are near, and seek where you are found. For your resurrected Lord, our family means divine. You may 
Sagare and the word in his blood and wine. And when a life of faith is done in realms of clear light, may we behold you as you have and for an endless sign. Thanks be to God. Amen. Alleluia. Paul has one more final announcement. What you got for us, Paul? All right, thanks, Paul. Very good. <laughs> Hi, good morning. Good morning. Good to see you guys. Thanks for being with us today. Hi, good morning. Good to have you here today. Oh, good grief. All right, I got to work on that. Hi, Steve. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to have you here today. Good morning. 